everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, or tonight, or whenever the hell you're watching this, Brad, we have your NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day sort of reaction video. It's not going to be typically like a regular review video where, you know, we break down each matchup and we go into it and cover everything about it. I'm just going to give you the things right off the top of my dome, what I thought of everything that took place. Holy shit, Brad, what a show. What matches we got on this card. I mean, we had a lot of stuff going on here today, guys, but let's go ahead and just dive straight into everything. Thing. So you guys know that we did start off with the women's finals or the finals of the women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, which featured Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, who took on Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart. I thought this matchup was pretty good. I didn't expect it to start the show, but they did. They kicked it off right there. I thought they'd start off with Johnny Wrestling, Io Shirai, you know, one of those matchups. That would have probably made the most sense to me, at least in my brain it did. But they kicked it off with this finals of the women's Dusty Classic, and I thought it was pretty solid. It wasn't my favorite match. It was kind of, you know, roughy around the edges there. I haven't always been a big fan of Raquel, but she's getting better and better for me, and I thought that she improved a lot, and she looked good in this match. She was beating the hell out of everybody in this thing. Pretty good matchup overall. I enjoyed it. If First of all, if you guys missed this event, I think the full event is definitely worth the watch, okay? Definitely want to go back and watch it. Unfortunately, we don't have all the figures, so that is kind of disappointing. We don't have all the figures or all the people on this show represented in figure form, but Mattel will catch up, Brad. But Dakota Kai and Raquel would go on to win, which I was actually pleased with. I, I just, I don't know why I felt like, uh, I feel like they're more of a natural tag team compared to Ember and Shotzi, even though they have the green hair and whatever. I just felt like the other team made more sense and they kind of, you know, they clicked together a little bit but that's just what I was thinking, you know, that's just what I was thinking there. Next up guys, we had Johnny Football Wrestling or Johnny Football Basketball Baseball taking on Kushida and Kushida was looking like Marty McFly out there. He had his whole Marty McFly get up to a T going. I know we've seen things in the past, Brad, but this right here was full on. I wish he would have broke out the damn $15,000 air mags on this night because him and Johnny Gargano took each other to the limit. Great wrestling flow in this. Very physical matchup. Very good match. Probably my favorite Kushida match to date in uh, in WWE. I think I think that's for sure. I think Johnny Gargano had on another Wolverine inspired gear. I wonder if we'll get that from Mattel. Wish we had it right now, but I went with my Hell's Gate Iron Man Championship attire in which he did lose but then he actually snapped his freaking neck if you guys watch the show. Go watch the show. But damn, what a physical matchup. Johnny Gargano ends up retaining with which I can agree with. I, I think that unfortunately, I don't know where Kushida goes from here, guys, because Kushida really, at the end of the day, like, this was his big moment. Like, if he was going to do a big splash or make a big splash, I think it would have been right now. I really don't even know where the go guy goes from here. I feel like this is pretty much his ceiling, honestly. Like, because if he goes up to the main roster, they're going to feed him to the 24-7 championship and if he were to stay here, I mean, where does he go? You know, where does he go? After that nice little whatever the hell I'm about to say with Gorgon I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to say, but that was still a really physical matchup. It was a fun matchup, and there you go. Holy shit, Brad. The next matchup, the tag team matchup for the finals of the men's version of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, MSK, Grizzled Young Veterans. That's all I have to say, man. These guys were all over the damn place. This is a match of the year contender, guys. If you missed out on this show, you want to go back and watch this matchup specifically, I mean, I'd recommend the whole John Brown show. I'm just going to be real. NXT is one of the best things on the entire planet as far as wrestling is concerned, if not number one. You know, you can have your you can have your debates all you freaking want to, Brad. I'm just I'm just here to give you my thoughts and opinions on what I witnessed tonight. And what I witnessed tonight was a damn good football tag team match between these two teams here in the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Classic. They were flying all over the ring, man. If you want athleticism, if you want craziness, if you want good classic NXT tag team wrestling, this is the matchup for you. Why doesn't the main roster follow this formula? Why don't you watch that matchup and go, damn, Brad, maybe we don't need to go out there and suck. Like, why don't they like, I know they're held back. Like, I know Creative and Vince and Gorilla and all that handcuffs you sometimes. Like, the main roster tag divisions are god-awful compared to this, man. You're not gonna get a matchup like that in the tag team division on either main roster. And if you do, it's gonna be on, like, a grand event. You're not gonna get this level of great tag team wrestling. And it's really disappointing because they could do so much, man. Can you imagine, like, I don't, just off the top of my head, can you imagine, like, giving us, like, the old... Like, why couldn't... Why didn't they let American Alpha just do their thing, you know? Like, why couldn't they just let these teams... Why do they have to just take these teams and then shatter them into a million pieces just for a few laughs on Monday Night Raw when nobody gives a damn and you're trying to just fill up shit on your Monday Night Raw three-hour program? Terrible. I don't know, man. Just, this is a damn good game. Oh, my God. Just go back and watch this match. That's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. Go back and watch the football game. That's all I... Just turn it on. Just turn it on. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we had our triple threat women's NXT championship match. Io Shirai, Tony Storm, Mercedes Martinez, another 
another talent that I'm not that big on, but you know what? She played her role in the matchup. I guarantee they added her to this matchup so that Tony or EO didn't take the pin. That's what I'm guessing in this matchup, but this was a hard-hitting affair. Pretty good stuff. I liked the attire that uh, EO and Tony Storm were rocking on this night. I also noticed that Mercedes, for whatever reason, I didn't notice she had a Batman tap, but she has a Batman tap. Pretty, pretty good stuff. But EO Shirai ends up defeating and pinning Mercedes to win the matchup and retain her championship, which I was okay with. I think it would have been cool to see Tony Storm win it, but I don't know. Maybe she needs a little bit more here. And Io Shirai is one of the best women's talent on the planet as well. So her retaining here doesn't shock me one football bit. I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. There was a botch at one point. I think Tony Storm like went to clear off the announce table or something and the table just collapsed or something like that. That was pretty, uh, you know, that was a failure. I am the table. But also Io Shirai climbed up this scaffolding pole and then jumped off onto the other two ladies. I felt like that took a little bit too long. I would have liked that to have been sped up a little bit. I'm just nitpicking a little bit. It was still a fun matchup and everything like that. So Io Shirai is still your NXT Women's Champion. I'm fine with that. I don't have a football problem with that. And then we move into our main event, guys. We got my main event. This is uh, this is two of my favorite talents probably in the world right now. You got my boy Finn Balor. You guys know how I love Finn Balor. You got Pete Dunne coming in here. We knew this matchup was going to just throw hands, right? I mean, this matchup was going to be physical. It was going to be hard-hitting. It was going to be technical. We were going to get some damn good storytelling in this, and there was no buts about it, man. These guys beat the hell out of each other for 20 minutes or whatever the hell this was, man. The joint manipulation, tons of, like, strongholds, and I guess, I, I, I don't know, I guess you could call it submission maneuvers because, you know, they were manipulating joints and they were trying to, the whole story was the jaw of Finn Balor, the shoulder of Finn Balor versus the leg and the knee of Pete Dunne, and they were really playing on that. Of course, Pete Dunne was snapping fingers, and Pete Dunne was doing his thing with the joint manipulation, but these guys just rocked each other's world. Great near falls in this thing. I was literally on the, you know, I was literally on the edge of my seat many times. I thought Finn Balor was going to lose on multiple occasions in this matchup, but he got it done. At the end of the day, he hits Pete Dunne with a coup de gras. He locks in another 1916, and he puts away Pete Dunne to retain the NXT Championship, and this was great. And I was thinking to myself, where is Edge? You know, I thought for sure that the Rated R Superstar was going to show up. You know, I thought he was just going to come in, man. I thought Edge was going to come in, spear the hell out of Finn Balor, and uh, we were going to declare it. It was going to be Edge versus Finn Balor, WrestleMania. I know this is a crazy fantasy booking idea, but it just popped in my brain the other day. Edge comes in, challenges Finn Balor, because Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns, really neither guy needs to be derailed right now, so Finn Balor would make the most sense. You could go into an Edge versus Karrion Cross storyline. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do down the road, and Edge would add another championship to his repertoire, but uh, Edge would come in, beat Finn Balor. Finn Balor would leave WWE, go over to AEW and New Japan, and join in on the Bullet Club AEW sort of invasion angle that we got going on. So that was just a little short fantasy booking right off the top of the video, but anyways, Finn Balor does retain the championship. Another thought that I had while this was going on, I was like, oh my god, are we gonna get it, Brad? Are we gonna have Walter, the return of Walter, the Finn Balor Walter matchup that we never got that was been built to and then it got cut off? I thought we were gonna have Walter come out here, smack the hell out of Finn Balor, and then we we're gonna have a title for title match at WrestleMania. That was another thing that crossed my mind. I was like, oh my god, that would be that would be excellent, that would be epic. That didn't take place either. So I'm sitting around, I'm sitting around. Out come Dunn's goons. They beat the hell out of uh that's pretty much what they did, man. They marched down to the damn ring and beat the hell out of Benjamin Balor. So Danny Burch and Odie Lorcan come out and they beat the hell out of Finn Balor. Poor Finn Balor's getting beat down into the end of the ring. At the end of the ring, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, Brad. Anyways, so all that's taking place, right? Of course, Edge and Walter aren't here, but it, it looks good on the screen, you know? Oh, EO. But out of nowhere, Brad, out come the Undisputed Era. They charge the ring. NXT going wild. Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole, Roderick Strong coming out. So the Undisputed Era come out, and they clear the ring. Everybody hits the deck. Pete Dunne and Goons flee the scene. Undisputed Era in the ring. Finn Balor totally confused. He comes to, and he's like, what the hell's going on? Kyle O'Reilly's like, me and you, bro. Respect. I respect you, bro. And you know, they're handshaking, and they're chilling. And at one point, I was like, oh my god, are we about to get Finn Balor joining the Undisputed Era right now? Am I about to mark the hell out? What the hell's going on, Brad? What are we about to see? And then Kyle O'Reilly poses with the Undisputed Era logo. Adam Cole poses with the Undisputed Era. I'm talking about the hand symbol, of course. Roderick Strong poses with his Undisputed Era. And Finn Balor gets up there, and I think he's about to raise up the Undisputed Era. And then he points his shooter hand at the camera, and then bow! Super kick, Brad. Super kick to the face hole. Finn Balor gets super kicked in the mouth. And Adam Cole lays out Finn Balor. And Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly's like, dude, what the hell are you doing, Brad? What, what are we doing? This is a respect thing. This is a respect thing. And then, bow! 
Kyle O'Reilly taken out by Adam Cole. The armor is being broken, man. The bond is being broken. What does this mean? Are we going to get Undisputed Era Civil War Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly? Is this what we're building to now? We're going to have a Civil War in Undisputed Era? Could be some pretty good stuff. Finn Balor gets involved a little bit. I don't know where we're going exactly, but this show was bonkers. I really enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys missed it out on it, you definitely got to go check it out, but I'm intrigued. I can't wait to see what is next. I know it wasn't in my typical reviews and everything like that, but if you guys enjoyed it anyways, please let me know down in the comments section below, but this was a pretty banger show, if I will, but I've kind of sat here longer than I really wanted to and thought I would, but I think I'm getting out of here, guys. We do got a new video dropping tomorrow, so stay tuned for that, but uh, let me know. Would you rather have seen Walter come out and have the uh, champion for champion at Mania with Balor, Edge come out and spear Finn Balor, setting up their matchup at Mania, or do you like the Civil War with the Undisputed Era and everything, but I was just glad that Balor retained, because, you know, that's my boy, but I love Pete Dunne, and he, he did a fantastic job as well, but I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and uh, you know not what to do, but also don't do it. Don't cross the line. You cross the line.